Welcome to the Bushido Gang. What's up, guys? It's Attack on Samurai, and welcome to week five of the Bushido Gang Draft League, aka the BGDL. Um, so this is, um, so yeah, this is week five of it. Uh, so after this week, there are two more weeks left of the regular season, and then, um, after that, we got playoffs. And uh, semi well semifinals and then or playoffs and then semifinals and then finals for the for the thing. So yeah, it'll be the best. It'll it'll be the uh, top four players that make it. So if these players can get four wins, then they're pre then they pretty much qualify for the playoffs. So for this week we have the Dubai Dragapults versus the Pennsylvania Phantoms. So right now. The Dubai Dragapults are three and one, and the Pennsylvania Phantoms are two and two. So if they get this one, then that gives them one point up. But if DM, but if uh, but if DMP captain of the Dubai Dragapults gets his dub, then he is pretty much qualified at this point. Because again, above four, pretty much like qualifies you for, for qualifies you for playoffs. So if he gets this win. Then it's a wrap, but let's see what happens. So, in terms of a uh, in terms of a matchup, um, hmm, um, Everglade, uh, aka Helga, uh, they have a, uh, or I mean, he has a pretty good shot here, I'd say. Um, if he gets rid of the Pex, Azumarill could be very dangerous for uh, for for the uh, Dubai Dragapults. So if he can remove that Pex, then he's good. Um, it seems like his way of removing is going to be Kiram or maybe even the um it's probably gonna be kiram kiram's like the best answer to the to the uh to the peck since he could just free try it he's also gonna need uh, he's also gonna need uh rocks as well to like chip that down even further um but in terms of like the dubai dragapults they have a pretty good uh they actually their matchup is a little bit harder i might say but at the same time i think i think the dragapults can be very key here depending on what kind it is if it's a uh if it's a physical one um, it could be pretty dangerous for him. Um, and the Silvalli, I believe it was Silvalli Steel or Fairy. Silvalli Fairy could actually be pretty dangerous here too. Since it does speed tie with the Kerum. So if he wants to make it like a max speed one, he can. And the Koba is probably going to be like just rocks. Just like more of a supporting one. Um, the, port the P2 is going to be interesting though. I'm not sure why he brought it. Maybe he just needed like a good solid wall to deal with Volcarona if he brought it. Surprised he didn't actually bring Volcarona. Volcarona, Volcarona would have been pretty good against him. Um, but let's see how they play it. So, turn one, uh, the Phantoms are going to lead with the Toad, and they're going to lead with the uh, Dragapult. In comes the P2, and they double. Okay, we're making double switches turn one, and there's a Toxic right off that, and a Toxic right back too. Oh, snap. They're throwing throwing Toxic right off that. Okay, so the Phantoms are going to get a U-turn off and go into the Sender Scorch, as the Sender Scorch is going to get Toxic there. So, the Dragapults make a good play there to catch it. In comes Pex, and now what happens? Here comes a knockoff. So, there's the knock that I was talking about. So, if they're able to remove the... Um, well, granted, even with Pex getting its item, even getting its item removed, still makes it like a useful, still makes it useful anyway. So, um, item being removed is cool because that gets rid of the recovery, but at the same time, like you can still play off this. He's gonna get Toxic there or catch the Toxic, but um, they're gonna be aggressive. They're gonna Toxic back. Okay, they're gonna get Toxic, so they're just throwing Toxics at after Toxics. Jeez. All right, so so Valley's gonna come in here, and that's gonna get Toxic too. So Jesus, just everything getting Toxic. <laughs> that's pretty funny. All right, so here comes the Tote. Um, they're gonna go for an SD. That was a very aggressive play from the from the uh, Dragapults, because with this SDing now, multi attack is gonna be doing a ton. Because in case you didn't know, uh, multi attack gets boosted to 120 base power. So that's basically that's basically the um, basically as much as like is about as strong as a judgment from Arceus. Uh, so that's pretty much like what they needed to make this mod even better. So yeah, what's a valley doing that or getting that plus two? I need to remove this. This is getting annoying. <laughs> oh god. Okay, let's just skip that ad. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm I'm really trying. Um, trying to uh get this recording like as, as like great as I can. But yeah. Uh, Toad has to get up rocks now. But even if it does get up rocks, like that's all it can really do. So Toad might die here to the uh to this attack, and it actually lived it. So he was defensive, 
and he's gonna get the uh gonna get that damage off though so that's getting chip which is actually fantastic he's gonna let the toad drop so there goes toad i'm assuming that the pincer might actually be choice scarf now or it's gonna be like a rocker um let's see um he is choice scarf okay so pincer gets the kill and in comes the rotom and it's going to switch and go into that and here comes another earthquake so he's mole breaker earthquake okay so with mole breaker earthquake that means he could actually hit the rotom but at the same time i feel like maybe moxie would have been would have been cooler but pincer still has a hard time like breaking through anyway but let's see how he's gonna play off this he's gonna bring in the mandibuzz on the recovery so pex is just gonna heal up um i'm very curious how he's gonna play around this pex so this thing is a problem he's gonna roost here to keep the mandy healthy so again good play from everglade or everglade um in comes the uh, volt switch now so pex can come back in on the volt in comes a yui so they're gonna just pivot around a little a little bit kiram's in here now with kiram coming in here this is a free freeze dry um freeze dry will probably kill that because it seems like his pecs might be like more defensively oriented um but again not too sure though let's see how much did uh i think it did attack it didn't it toxic or did like knock off on that knock off did 16 percent hmm that's a little bit that's not that bad i mean that damage doesn't doesn't really show a lot but i don't know could mean he's more defensively oriented but let's see he does have rotom anyway which can wall the kiram but um again he could also draco too to catch the uh rotom but it's easy for uh the dragapults to just switch out and go on the rotom on free stride so let's see if they do it or they go cobalion that also works too so there is a draco and it is specs okay <laughs> so cobalion got nuked jeez all right so in comes the stone edge what was it scarfed no no way it wasn't scarfed jab okay this is a very weird cobalion maybe it's like av it must be av to deal with uh to deal with the uh volcarona that makes sense okay so this is dead now to jet but he's not gonna let that happen quite yet so here comes the jet doing 11 percent to that so not too much and comes the mandy again gonna roost here probably cobalion's gonna come in here and go for a stone edge edge won't kill it just won't <laughs> but he's gonna let do this instead and go into the zoom rule okay so interesting so there goes the cobalion so cobalion's dead now um and now it comes the pult so what's pult gonna do probably go for the uh, hex hex should probably kill thunder oh okay so mandy's down so now it's four four um so the dragapults are pretty healthy at this point i mean the p the p2's poisoned um pex has his item removed but he still has two very healthy mons that could do a lot right here um however where it comes to the uh, phantom side the azurma is almost dead uh the center scorch is poisoned the pincer really can't break through this it really can't unless he was moxie this would have been this would have been a little bit easier but the fact he's not makes this a lot harder for him um he's gonna have to rely on the kiram so let's see he brings in the center scorch and in comes the rotom to take and here comes the kiram so draco can come in and just nuke something now so it's actually whoa so he was modest okay then that matters a lot that means that this could actually die this could definitely die to our freeze dry and his team doesn't really have too many freeze dry answers now but with rotom dying there that's actually very very crazy to see um dragapult's gonna come in here now and here comes the azurmal to, to uh, get sacked here comes a thunder so maybe this is specs dragapult then okay so kiram's back in here um is he gonna freeze dry he has yo the darts with the thunder <laughs> dang that is tough that is tough here comes a quake quake doesn't do that much though and he's gonna try and get like a crit or something he doesn't get it he's gonna recover here he has to get a crit to get something but even if he does i don't think it's really gonna help him deal with the p2 at this point so yeah that that is just oh that darts was crazy that was a really good play um toxic again double toxic but at this point i think it's pretty much secure for the dragapults um he could go for the for the fire lash but even a minus two flash won't do that much and it's actually av okay so um that's still not going to do enough 16 another drop but you could just recover here or even do that yeah so you had the haze too and that is going to be the game because he's not going to get enough damage off on that double double fire move is pretty cool though that could have worked out um but yeah that's uh not gonna do too much you could like still try to do that but you should keep doing this to make sure they just get weakened by the pincer or for the pincer so yeah that is gonna be the game and uh yeah very cool game though very very cool game um i do think that the um oh crap i do think that uh so you're just gonna keep earthquake and that's gonna be the game but yeah i do think that 
if he had switch well see it's kind of hard to tell with dragon ball because dragon ball could be like it has several sets it could be um jeez these ads are so annoying <laughs> um but yeah uh like i said like um it's kind of hard to tell like what kind of set dragon ball could be because it could be either specs it could be like mix uh mix pole is definitely a mon that could catch people off guard so still very 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 cool um so that is gonna secure the dragapult's win for um that's gonna secure their win for this week and also pretty much their position for the playoffs so now with the phantoms uh they are pretty much out of the uh out of playoff position but still it was a it was a hard fought it was a hard fought game um definitely could have came down to the wire um but yeah, it was definitely a very a very cool game though. Very, very cool game. Um, but yeah, that covers uh this the match for this week. Uh, now let's move on to next week. So next for the or not next week, for this week. I'm so so I'm so sorry. So for this week, we have the Wisconsin Weezings versus the um I'm so sorry, versus the Sunset Lake the Sunset Lakes um Oh shoot. The Sunset Lake Subtiles. Um Okay, looking at the matchup, I'm so sorry if you hear that. That's like a helicopter going over my house. Um, anyways, um, in terms of a, of a matchup, actually, it looks like this is the same team that uh that Helmy brought uh last week um against um against Ed. Um, it looks pretty much like identical to that team. Uh, just that I think he uh I think he had he had something else over that. I think he had Heliolisk. He had, he had Lisk over the um over the Corsola. Um so let's see in terms in terms of matchup. Um Eric actually has a pretty decent matchup. Um if he can play the Clef and the Flygon well, he should be able to get out of this. He should be able to get out of this. Um he can wall the Urshifu and even the uh even the Grimmsnarl. Um and possibly the Tar, but it depends on what kind of Tar it is. Um, I'm assuming it's gonna be like a ban tar, or maybe just a, or maybe a support tar, but it could also be DD tar. DD tar would be crazy. That would actually be wild. Maybe that's why he's got the Grim Snow there for the support. Um, but yeah, if it's DD tar, oh, yo, help me. You you brought back a classic. <laughs> but um, but yeah. But going back to Eric though, um, he has a pretty good shot with Clef, Flygon, and even Rillaboom. Um, he's gonna need to wear down the this thing if he can wear down this enough. Then he could definitely uh, uh, clutch this out with the Rillaboom, plus the uh, Clef and Flygon. The Flygon might be more of a def might be more of a defensive one or maybe a Choice Scarf one. Choice Scarf Flygon would actually be really solid here if he does have it. Um, I'm feeling like this might be a Curse Gastrodon. Curse Gastro could be pretty cool too. Uh, the Mew is probably just going to be like fully utility, so probably just Rocks and Spikes, which could help again with this and also help with this. Um, let's see. All right, so also let me pause because this these ads, man, these ads will never stop. <laughs> Jeez. All right, let's go back. All right, so turn one, the Sceptiles are gonna lead off the, with Flygon, and the Weezings are gonna lead off with their Shifu. Okay, so here comes a Yui. So Yui's gonna come off on that, and comes the Gastrodon to take the CC. Oh my gosh! And it ate two, so it's defensive Gastro. Okay, so just like last time, and he takes another one. Hold up, that did 56. 56. So wait, it did 46 to 50. Hold up. Wait, there's no way. Okay, I was about to say. I was about to say. I thought he was. Uh, I thought it was metronome. I thought it was metronome on that. Um, that did a lot though. Like, how did it go from like, like it it did 43 to 56? <laughs> what kind of what kind of like, like yo, that's some crazy damage. Jeez. Um. Yeah, that's some insane damage. Um, anyways, with this coming in here, he could definitely go for T spikes, or he could go. Or there, okay, there's gonna be like a little little crit there. Uh, here comes the Flygon to take the flip turn. Okay, so he's gonna flip turn out and bring in the Corsola. So Corsola is a very fat mon; it can eat everything in existence. So here comes the Clef to probably get up rocks. Nightshade. Okay, so the Sceptiles are gonna bring in the Clef to get nightshaded. In comes the Tar from the Weezing side. So there's gonna be a a, a a wish. So is it gonna be wish protect? It's probably wish protect. Now it's dragon tail. Okay, so it's just support tar. So then it might be rocks then. 
It is rocks, okay. And he goes for the Moonblast to chip it. So it's a uh, more of a defensive uh, kind of gap. Oh, it's unaware. Huh. That could kind of hurt him. That could hurt him. Um, if he's unaware on that. But I guess he wanted to make sure that he doesn't get, like, messed up by Urshifu. But even... But even still, like, a, a Surging Shrek can still do a lot to Clef anyway. So... Those are Golgi. Goes for a Moonblast to get chipped. So he's gonna chip that down a little bit more. Um, but yeah, with this being unaware, that is gonna definitely be in... Gonna be more in Helmy's favor. He comes a wave. That did a lot. That did a ton. Um, he's gonna recover here. Here comes another wave. So Wave's doing a lot. He needs to get a poison. So that's what Weezing's trying. That's what the uh, what's Helm is trying to go for. He goes for a Draco. Oh snap! Okay, so it's not Specs. So this is probably like a um, probably like AV most likely. Gonna recover there on the switch in. So the Sceptiles are gonna try and keep this healthy. Here comes a sub. Oh, it's sub bulk up, yo. <laughs> sub bulk up is so cool. Oh, it's sub nasty blot. What? Oh, that's a problem. Oh, that's a problem. <laughs> Here comes a, a skull, but that's not gonna do enough. No skull, no burn either. Here comes the clef. Um, it could definitely wall this for days. So this will do nothing. Um, what's it called? Like dazzle won't do anything. I actually I did a lot even after the even after that. Roselli berry is gonna just eat. So gonna drop that now. But now clef can take the hit even better. I'm gonna go for another nasty. Here comes the so here comes the uh, wish. So he's gonna try and keep this thing healthy again. Gonna moon blast, and there goes the Grim Snarl. So Grim Snarl is dead, and the Clef is healthy. So so far, it's looking like Eric is taking the lead. Um, but but he still has to deal with a couple more things. Yeah, um, yeah, he still has to deal with a couple a couple more things. Like um, yeah, he can moon blast this down, but like that's all he can really do. Um, but I still think he needs to keep this. He needs to preserve the this for the Urshifu. Um. But yeah, it looks like he's not running rocks this week. Unless it actually is the Mew, or the Mew something else. I guess the Mew might be more offensive then. Um, well, let's see. So he's going to go for Drill now. So it's actually Molebreaker Drill. Huh. Interesting. I wonder why is he Molebreaker Drill on this. Um, maybe he forgot to put Sandville? Or Sand, Sand Rush? Um, well, Iron is still going to do a lot, even, even though it is unaware. Uh, this will still do a lot of damage. He's gonna go into the uh, Appleton to eat the hit. To eat the hit. Oh, that did not eat that hit very well. So that is a lot of damage. Um, Gasher's gonna come in here, maybe take the hit better. Um, no, it does not take the hit. That might be Bandit. That might be Bandit actually. <laughs> that thing's looking Bandit. Hold up, <laughs> that's a Bandit uh, drill. Jeez. Um, Quake can kill that, but he's not gonna let that die. Um, he's gonna go into this and eat very well. So, in comes the Appleton, but he's probably going to get burned. Um, or Strain Sap. Okay, that's still fine. He can still keep this thing healthy. Um, if he's faster, then he should be okay. And he's not. So, there goes the Appleton. So, Appleton's going to drop. Here comes the Mew. He can knock this off, at least. Um, he's going to block. What? Wait. Why did it say it didn't work? Oh, that's right. Because block doesn't work on ghost types. Because you can't trap them what i have never seen this i've actually never seen this um this is interesting i have never seen that happen before i mean he gets to synchronize it at least but that is interesting so you can't so you can't block that okay he should have been prison first if he's running if he was running the imprison set which i'm pretty sure he was um he could strain stab here though and keep this healthy so he is gonna do that. Um, but he's not rocks on this, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, he's not rocks on this, so what else could he have? Okay, so Clef's gonna come back in here. And they're gonna go for a crunch. Okay, so the Weasnes are gonna crunch that. Uh keep the uh clef low. Um, but the drill can easily come back in here and just put more pressure. So does he have anything else to hit this thing? It doesn't seem like he does. So I guess it's, it's literally just wish protect clef. Um gonna go into the Mew now. So what's Mew gonna do? Iron Head, that's definitely banded as well. Jeez, that is super banded. Um, so what could he do here? Okay, so he's gonna, go, he's gonna go back into the tar and block it. Okay, so he blocked the tar. Um, so now he can remove the sand. Um, he imprisoned it. Okay, so it was imprisoned tar or imprisoned uh, Mew. So he, wait, wait, what? Wait, <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait. I'm confused. Hold up. Okay, so he. So wait, why did oh he dragon tilt? I thought he crunched. Okay. 
I was I thought he crunched there. My fault. So he's gonna go for the UE, bring in the uh, Corsal. He could imprison that too. Brings in brings in the Rillaboom now. So he does have the right ability this time. Okay, good job, Eric. <laughs> okay. Um, this thing won't die even to a even to a, a choice banded uh, wood hammer. It's not gonna die. So he's gonna have to just like pivot around again with the Mew. Um, let's see if he does. He knocked it. Okay. Um, but now he's gonna get burned. So he gets burned. Um, unless he has heal bell on the clef. He might have heal bell on clef. It's in a Yui. You know what? I think that's heal bell clef. It is heal bell clef. Okay. So he could strain sap, but it doesn't really matter. He's not getting a lot of health back from that. And he can nightshade it down, but that's all he can really do. But he could definitely heal bell here. Yep, he's heal bell. Okay, I got you. Um, yeah, I'm so sorry. We're just gonna skip these again. Jeez. Okay. Um. So. He, okay. Hold up. Hold up. I just. I just skipped a turn. Um. Okay. So he Yui there. Okay. And he got the. Then he got the uh, heal bell off. Okay. And then after that, he did what now? He went for the strain sap again. Okay. So gonna wish again. Gonna go for the nightshade. Okay. So what are they gonna keep doing? Um. It seems like it's kind of a stalemate at this point. Um. He could go into the mute now. Is he gonna imprison it now? Goes back into the tar. Okay. So, what's he gonna do again? So he gets the wish off. So uh, Mew's back to health or back to a uh, full. Comes the tar. He's gonna crunch it now. Um. Okay. What he should do is just transform right here. Yep. So he does do it, and I can get up rocks. So he's gonna get the uh, synchronize off, but he can still rock up here. So let's see. Oh sh! Yo, what? <laughs> what? Yo, that might. That is a lot of attack investment. Either that's a lot of attack investment, or the Mew isn't fully defensive. Um, but usually, if you're running in Prison Mew, um, most of the time they're go they're going like timid, max HP, max speed. Um, that's huge. That's huge. I think if he imprisoned it first, he might have gotten up rocks there. Granted, I guess he was assuming that the drill probably had spin. Um, but yeah, this is looking pretty tough. The Corsola still won't die to an earthquake from Flygon. Um, but Rillaboom has a better shot though. So. He could still like come through with this thing. So the real boom might come out. Let's see. He goes into the into he goes flygon instead. So he's gonna bring it bring back this. And go for the earthquake. That does a lot more. Oh snap. Okay, that, that did a lot more than that. Okay. Actually, he did like 30 last time. Is he banded? Is he banded flygon? He might be banded flygon. Oh, uh, well that that happened. Um, so now it comes the Urshifu to go for a jet or even go for the, uh, go for the, uh, yeah, Surging Strike. So there goes the Surging Strike and there goes the Clef. Oh, crap. And Clef will probably just get even lower here. Um, he can't even, re he can't even protect though because of, uh, Unseen Fist. So there goes the Clef. So Clef drops. But I think Rillaboom plus Flygon should still have this. He can just SD here for free if he wants. Um, no, he's gonna just take this Mon out. Okay, so there goes the Urshifu. Um... So her Shifu's gone. Dragology's in here. Gonna go into the tar to bait it. Okay. Um, he goes for the high. Oh, yo, this game is crazy. Okay, so you could just go for it again because that'll kill off the drill or that'll kill off the uh, Dragology as well. So you grassy glides. Okay, so there goes the tar. Grassy glide will kill off the drill, and he could and he could uh, high horsepower the Dragology, and that should be the game. Let's see. So there goes the there goes drill, and he can high horse the Dragology, and that's it. So wow, so Eric won this game. Not bad, not bad. That was a really solid game. <laughs> that was a really solid game. Um, definitely, I really thought that uh, that Helmy had the matchup here with the Dragology. Like Dragology really went off here, but um, Eric definitely played it well. He definitely did. Um, especially with the um, I think he, I think the Mew was no, not the Mew. It was definitely the Rillaboom. The Rillaboom was just fantastic it, it really did go through his go through his team like very well um like helmy had to play very smart around it so i understand why he played around it like that but yeah the knockoff there was great and the fact he saw that heal bell was really good too um he was able to really capitalize with that with the rillaboom um but yeah rillaboom definitely was a threat i should have peeped that more <laughs> i mean i did but like i didn't really like uh focus more on it but yeah rillaboom was just great here um yeah, overall, this was a really cool game. I'm actually surprised he wasn't SD on this. I guess he couldn't really afford to put SD. Maybe he just wanted he just wanted to make sure it could pivot around. But overall, this was a really fun game. <laughs> this was a very, very fun game. So, 
Homie, captain of the Wisconsin Weezings, are going to lose for this week. And they are now 2-3. and three. And Eric, captain of the Sunset the Sunset Lake Septiles, is going to be 2-3 and three now. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, They both still have a shot to come back. Um, Again, there's still two more weeks left. So, if they can get uh, two more wins, then that should put them up. Oh, yeah, same with... um. Same with uh the Phantoms. I'm so sorry. Um yeah, they still have a shot as well since they still have two more weeks. So again, if they can get four wins, they have a shot. Um But yeah. Alright, so that pretty much covers the match for this week. Now let's move on to this week's match with the Oh my goodness. Jesus Christ, these ads. <laughs> I just I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Alright, so we have um, Ed, captain of the New Mexico Ludicolos, versus um, King Evie, captain of the Farmington for Alligators. So, matchup-wise, it's looking pretty, looking pretty interesting. Uh, that Haxorus goes crazy, especially if he's banded. Banded Haxorus kills everything. Um, literally, there's like no answer. Um, like it's really interesting um, with King Evie's draft, like. He doesn't really have hazards, but at the same time, he doesn't really need it. Like his team is literally just power. It's just go. It's just go crazy. That's it. Just go crazy and hit everything. Um, the reboot's gonna be pretty useful too. It could definitely. It could definitely do some work. It can HJK this. It can HJK that or blitz it. Um, sucker punch is gonna be pretty strong against the Palisand, but at the same time, Palisand is a very fat mod, so it could definitely take a sucker punch and then revenge kill it. Um, he's got. He could definitely deal with this as well. Um, U turn's gonna be pretty useful. Um, but he gets walled completely by the Coma O. Uh, with with the uh, with this, which is why he's got the Sneasel to break through that and also knock off that and knock off this. So Sneasel plus Reboot's gonna be pretty nice. Uh, Zero Aura, I don't think it's gonna really do too much. Um, now with Ed's side, um, the Como could be a could definitely do some work against him. Um, if the Como is like a uh, like a Clangor Soul kind of, we're well, not Clangor Soul. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess I guess Clangor Soul. Again, I did allow that. Um, so if he has Clangor Soul. Um, then he could definitely do some work here too. Um, but if he's even like, like any kind of setup set, um, if he's any setup set that he could definitely do some work. Um, I'm assuming he is since he has Palestine as the rocker. Um, but yeah, Como could definitely do some work here. Um, if it is like a setup one, like Didi, Didi could definitely, could definitely just mess something up. Um, and he has a way to deal with the, uh, to deal with the bro in this and also with this. So he can manage around bro very easily. So let's see what happens here. All right. So turn one, they're gonna lead off with the reboot, and the and the Mexicos are gonna and the New Mexico Ludicolos are gonna lead off with the Palace. And here comes a Yui, and in comes the Sneasel on the rocks. Okay, so rocks are up now for the pal for the uh, Ludicolos. He's gonna go for the knockoff. Okay, so he's actually inner focus. Inner focus is cool because that means that uh this cannot be intimidated. Um, so that is very, very, very cool. Jeez. How are, these, how are these songs going by so fast? And, like, these ads just, like... Okay. Um, it, it probably just, like, doubles or something. Okay. Well, anyways. Uh, we're back here. So, knocking off the uh, Incineroar is really cool. What does that knock off? Boots. Okay, so there, go, there goes the boots. He's going to do it again. Wow. I wonder why he do it again. I guess maybe he thought that he'd switch into, like, Como or something. Or maybe... I don't know why he did. Knockoff was pretty weird though, but here comes the Como. So now this Como can set up. Um, here comes the uh, Bro. So Bro's in here, and he's gonna go for the Clangor Soul. So yeah, there it is. There's the Clangor Soul, like I was talk, like I was talking about. So with him doing that, um, for one, he'll be faster than the uh, than the Hacksters if it's not like Choice Scarf. Um, and two, this dies like pretty like it, it just dies. He's actually lefties on that, so he's gonna Earthquake. Oh, so he's physical. That did a lot. Yo. Is he? Ah, uh, there it is. <laughs> Yo, quick draw, quick claw. All right. I guess it's just quick claw this time. Or quick draw this time. Um, Yeah, this thing is hilarious. <laughs> this thing is hilarious. Okay, so in comes the uh, Incineroar. Going to bring in the Zero Aura now. On. Okay, so he's not boots. Okay, so here comes the parting shot for the... um. For the Lily Colos. In comes the hair across and it's Twist Scarf. Is it Moxie? It is. Okay, so that's a problem. Here comes the, ha the uh, Haxorus. Like I said, Haxorus is a threat to him. So let's see. He's going to Earthquake. It's not going to kill. 
and goodbye. So there goes the, the uh, hair cross. But now Bro can come in here and eat uh, very easily. Oh, wow. Well, okay, it didn't eat that well, but it definitely just took the hit. He could do it again. He has to do it again. So he's going to sack the uh, Incineroar. So cool. All right, so Incineroar's gone. Um, yeah, Bandit Haxorus is insane. This mod just has no switch in. Um, he could do it again, and he is going to do it again. <laughs> yo. Yo, Eevee. <laughs> King Eevee, man. Like, that's hilarious. All right, so there goes the Palace in Weakened. And now Sneasel could come in here, and it could just clean up so there goes the knock and uh yeah knock knock <laughs> uh and nobody's there because the whole game just ended with the sneasel so this is probably bandit sneasel too i'm pretty sure it was bandit yeah it was bandit sneasel so that's gonna be the game and uh yeah so king eevee captain of the farmington for alligators get their dub and ed um and ed captain of the uh new mexico ludicolos is going to take it it's going to take a loss for this week so i do believe that that puts the that puts them up by one now so i think they're three and two um it should be three and two if i if i believe i think i think they are three and two now so ed is now um two and three so let's see what happens here all right so this is my match for uh, week five of the, I mean, this is my uh, match for week five, and this is also the last match of the week. So, also let me switch the size real quick. Hold up. Oh snap! Yo yo yo! Let me get rid of the music real quick. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we have the Fire Nation, um, or I mean Bible Captain of the Fire Nation versus me, um, or yeah, me, uh, Captain of the Washington Samurais. So, um, looking at the matchup, um. Like, when I saw this team, I was just like, okay, this is not what I expected. Like, I I pretty much expected him to bring, like, terrain of some kind. Like, I thought he'd bring either psychic terrain or even, like, electric terrain. Like, one of those two could have been very bad for me, so I had to prepare as best I could. Um, Like, I had I had to run some, like, trick stuff here, and I had to do some other stuff as well. I also had to prepare for the, for the Amoongus, because um, Amoongus definitely could uh, could stop some stuff, can stop some mods on my team. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this was not the team I expected. Um, I really thought he brings some, like, terrain stuff. Again, if he brought some terrain, I would have had a much harder time here. Um, but, let's see what happens here. Alright, so turn one, um, they lead with Ace as I lead with Reuniclus. Also, by the way, I forgot to mention that Cinderace is Blaze and not Libero. So, um, I know Cinderace did get banned, uh, recently for, for Smogon OU. But I decided to let him keep the ace and just let it be Blaze. So Blaze Ace isn't that much of a problem compared to like Libero Ace. Libero Ace just kills everything without a sweat. But um But with this ace, uh there's a little bit more he has to work off of. So um So yeah, uh he has to work a little bit harder to get his kills with Ace. Um but let's see what happens. So he's gonna Yui here, as what I do is I go for the trick. Now I went for the trick here because, um, for one, for for one, um, I kind of thought. Well, I mean, with the Yui into that, I kind of thought he'd bring in either Urshifu or maybe even the Rotom. Um, if he brought in one of his offensive mons, um, then I would have been able to remove that item. So again. Uh, removing a, uh, life, or a, uh, or whatever item on there, Shifu would have been good for me. And, and if it was, like, a Choice Scarf one, or even Bandit, then I could do the same thing with something else. Granted, it would have been a little bit harder since his team is very physically oriented, but still, removing an item on that was good. But the fact that I removed the item on the Malwell, and it doesn't get toxic, it's not the best, but we get lefties, which is actually a better trade. So, now what he can do is go for Rocks, which he does choose to do as I bring in my Blissey. So, actually, he goes for the, uh, player of. Actually, um, I realized that... Well, no, he does go for it, I think. Or maybe he went for the... I get my rocks up, though. He went for the taunt. So, um, unfortunately, his mobile is not fast enough to outspeed my Blissey, as I did put a little bit of speed investment into it. Um, I don't remember how much I put, but I think it was enough to outspeed... Well, it's base 55 anyway, so it naturally outspeeds Amoongus. Um, but I don't remember what the speed was. Unless maybe he didn't have enough speed, but... Um, maybe it was just a slower variant, but... Uh, anyways, we do get the rocks up, which is really good because that chips down the Rotom. And in case he isn't boots on the Cinderace, then we also chip that down as well. But you're going to find out what he is not. So we go into the Pelipper as I can get my rain up. 
and he goes for the playoff and misses that miss kind of matters um but the same time not really since my pelipper is pretty defensive here comes the uh, road i go for the yui and i bring in keldio now keldio keldio again one of the new one of the new mons i brought over a uh, copper Raja, um or the new mon i brought over copper Raja. uh keldio is very dangerous against him uh again i felt like rain was like the best option for him so keldio could just pump things down like there's literally no like so there's no real answer unless his Amoongus is Spadef, which could actually take the hit very well. Um, but let's see. What he's going to do is go for the Volt Switch. So that told me right off bat he was Choice Scarf on that. So with him being Choice Scarf, that's going to matter quite a bit. But we do kill off one Mon though. And it's going to be the Mawile. So Mawile drops. And now in comes the Hitmon top. Now, this Mon. This Mon. This Mon is very deadly. <laughs> because it can do so many things. Like, Tekken Top is, is very scary. It's a very real threat. So, I kind of had to predict him to either Mach Punch or go for the Fake Out. I knew I could take the Mach Punch, but I really didn't think about Fake Out. So, what I do here is I stay in on Fake Out. <laughs> I did not think about Fake Out at all. So, he's going to Mach Punch here as I bring in. Actually, he went for the Triple Axe. I think he did that to... to uh, I think he did that as, like, a... In case I wanted to go into, maybe, Pelipper... I'm assuming that's why he did that play. Um, so yeah, that's gonna hurt my Reneclus a lot. Um, but we do get the lefties up and keep this healthy. He goes for the spin, and I do believe I went for the side shock as I do, and that does a lot to the hitmon top. But hitmon top is gonna live that very comfortably, um, or barely live it. But he goes for it again, and there goes the hitmon top. So hitmon top is gone. So that's two mons gone. Um, so overall, not too bad for me. Um, in comes the ace. So ace can just Yui here. Um, I did apologize though about the miss though, because the miss definitely sucked. If he did land that, um. I mean, if he landed it, I mean, this would have died, but I could have revenged it with, um, with, uh, with my Hydreigon. But again, I wasn't sure if he was going to be Mach Punch or anything. So that's why I wasn't, like, too sure about that. So I kind of, like, thought about it over. Or I thought it over, but I think Pelipper could have just dealt with it anyway. Could have just U-turned on it or Hurricaned it. Um, uh, since I, I think mine, since mine did have Hurricane. Um, anyways, with the Cinderace coming in here, uh, for one, my Machamp is very special. It's very special. Not like especially in Orient. I'm saying that like it's it's an interesting one because this is my counter to the Amoongus. Because guess what he's gonna do? We're gonna bulk up. He's gonna go for the spore. But we have a certain little move called Sleep Talk, and Facade is going to body the hell out of that ace. So Ace is gonna take a ton of damage from that. He goes for the power wall. This is a ton. Um, when I saw that damage, I was just like, yo. What is that damage? Is that bandit? But then I but then I remembered, oh he's Blaze. <laughs> so yeah, Blaze is gonna, you know, activate there. And it's gonna do a lot to me. Uh Blaze would do around 37 to 42 percent since my since my Machamp is very um invested in Spadeth or invested in defense. So it could take the power ball pretty uh decently well. Um But yeah, that does a lot to me. So I'm kind of forced to uh you know go for it again and try to knock this out but i don't knock it out so um he's gonna be able to uh you know get another power ball off raving yui if he wants to or do something else he goes for the power ball again as i bring my pelipper so he's not gonna take too much from that because he's gonna go for the yui though and in comes the amoongus as i go for the knockoff and remove the item so there goes the helmet on that um so with the item being with the helmet being removed that means i don't have to take chip from that in comes the rotom on the hurricane so we're gonna get some chip on that I'm going to bring in the Blissey now as he goes for the trick. So he did catch my Blissey. I was okay with that because Blissey doesn't really need to do much here. So all I needed to do is just get up rocks and I'm pretty much set. So I go for the T-Wave actually. T-Wave was kind of a mid-ground too in case he wanted to um, go into her Shifu or just some offensive mod to take advantage of this. But with Ace being paralyzed, that means that my Machamp's going to be able to outspeed it. Well, actually, it doesn't outspeed it still. Um, but uh, but this can outspeed it. <laughs> and we can kill off the, uh, the Ace. I'm so sorry about the cough. Um, but yeah, we'll be able to outspeed the, uh, ace with my, uh, Keldeo and be able to secret sword it or just scald it or jet it or whatever. So, uh, so yeah, um, I'm locked into T-Wave, so I'm not going to stay in here and let this keep T-Wave. He's going to Yui out and let, and, uh, going to drop off my, uh, Reuniclus. So now Urshifu comes in here. So Urshifu being the biggest threat here, uh, for, throughout this whole team. Um, Urshifu is a dangerous mon, very dangerous mon, because I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if he's going to be, run if he's going to be running Choice Scarf. I don't know if he's going to be going banded. Um, I do know that my Hydreigon is actually Choice Scarf. So if he is Choice Scarf, he's not going to outspeed me. And I can just Draco him and kill him. Because Urshifu's Spadef is not very good. So Draco will kill that always. Um, so I can go into the Hydreigon. And I can throw off a and I can throw off the Draco. As I do, but I miss. So uh, I go for it again because I was not trying to miss this this one. So I do kill off the Ace. 
Um, so Ace is gone. And now in comes the Arshifu who could just go for a Yui or go for a CC. So I let the Blissey go as I don't really need Blissey at this point. Um, again, he has the boots and it doesn't really help Urshifu anyway. So I bring in the Pelipper as I know I can take the CC. So he's going to go into the Rotom as I Yui out. So I do get the Yui off and now I can bring in the Keldeo. As since he did trick, um, we could just Secret Sword through him or even just pump through him. Um, I do believe I went for the Secret Sword um, since Secret Sword did kill that. And I wasn't trying to, you know, like miss a pump. Um, I probably did go for pump anyway. I did, and I do land it. So there goes the Rotom. So Rotom's dead. Um, the uh, the Amoongus is not going to take pump very well since he is defensive. So he's forced to go into the Urshifu and go for Sucker Punch. Um, or even go for Wicked Blow. He does go for the Sucker, and there goes my Keldeo. So with that coming in, I can just freely sit up with the Machamp. And I can just bulk up here as I do wake up here. Um, so I do bulk up right now. And he could go for the Spore again. But if he does, then your boy is going to be able to uh, get off some nice facades. So he's going to go for the Spore there. I need to get that roll so that way I can actually kill this. I can kill this right now uh, with the facade. So I do go for it. Actually, I get a third bulk up. So that's three. He goes for the Bomb, but it does nothing as my Machamp has some Spadef investment as well. So I can take the hit. Um, I messed up there. I messed up there. I didn't count the sleep turns. So I should have counted there. Um, it was already two. So I should have just went for the facade and I would have killed that. But it's still fine. Um, he goes for the bomb there. No, po He actually gets the poison there. But now we definitely killed the, the Amoongus. So I do go for it. And there goes the Amoongus. So Amoongus is dead. However, now I got to deal with Urshifu. So Urshifu is dangerous because it could just Wicked Blow or even just CC again. Um, but since he has choice, but since he has banded, um, he's pretty much locked in. So it all comes down to me landing Draco at this point. So if I can land the Draco, I'm good. Honestly, going back to that, um, to this play right here against the Amoongus, I should have just roosted instead of going for the, instead of going for the facade. Um, I didn't have to go, I didn't have to go for that play. Um, that play wasn't really like good for me. Um, but because of that, my, uh, Machamp is going to die there. And now I have to force myself to go for the Draco, but I'm not going to go for, it. I'm going to Yui here first, just to make sure that we guarantee kill it. Um, and I can go into the Pelipper as he goes for the, uh, Wicked Blow here. And that's going to kill me with the crit, of course, because it always crits. Now I can go for the Draco and I miss. <laughs> so he goes for it again he gets that nice damage and i have to hope i land this one and i actually do and that is going to be the game <laughs> so that is the game for this week or those are the games for this week so some crazy crazy games man um definitely games that came down to the wire um i don't know which one was my favorite though like they were all really good um like <laughs> they were really all good um honestly you know what? I'm gonna give Eric this one. I'm gonna give Eric and Helmy this one. This one, this was a good game. This was a very good game. Um, mostly because, well, for one, Eric has kind of been behind, so you know he kind of needs like a little push. So I think this was actually this was actually a very good game for him. Um, he played it very well compared to like the last couple weeks. So might be a redemption for a redemption week for uh for Eric. So overall, I definitely say this one was my favorite. And then after that, it will be uh, my game against Bible. Uh, this game definitely came down to the wire as well. Like, um, again, Draco in there would have been. Or, I mean, if I did, um, if I did land the Draco, then well, I mean it didn't even. Well, I mean it didn't matter. Like me landing Draco, but if I did miss, then I probably would have lost. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Um, so very solid games, though. Very solid games. And then probably after that, um, it would be. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. They were all they were all really good equally. They were they were equally very good. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna do it like right now. Just put up the uh, the teams or the um, the amount of points. So Bible Captain of the Fire Nation is now three two. Um, but he still has a shot to come back for the uh, for finals. Um, so now I am three two. So I just need one win for me. Um, the Weezings are three and or two and three or no, they're um yeah they're two and three. Um, the Phantoms are now two and three as well. Uh, so they are two and three. The Dragapults are now, uh, four and one. So with them being four and one, that pretty much guarantees that they are in the playoffs. Um, again, there's two more weeks left. So, uh, you guys got to start like picking it up. Got to start picking it up soon. So we're going to go for, uh, sorry, well, not go for it. We're, um, we're three and two now. And the Septiles are now, uh, two and three. And now the Feraligators are three and two. So, so far, uh, everyone's pretty much tied. I'm at this point. Oh wait, I forgot to put um, I forgot to put this. I'm so sorry. So, um, looking at it now, the Septiles and the Septiles, 
the uh, Pennsylvania Phantoms and the Weezings are tied um, with their uh, wins and losses. The Dragapults are now four and one, so that makes them uh, the highest um, in terms of like points. And um, I really should put like a differential thing, but I didn't really think about that. Um, but yeah, like they're they're on a winning streak right now, so they're pretty much like secured. Um, but yeah, overall though, overall this has been a very exciting, um, exciting week. But uh, but yeah. Um, also another thing that I do want to talk about, um, with recording for this week, um, like again, this is a little off topic, but I probably won't be recording any showdown lives besides the ADV one that I uh, po- that I recorded today, as I'm recording Sunday. So uh, you guys will see that uh, tomorrow for ADV Monday. But after that, I'm taking a break from battling. Um, it's just been pretty rough on me so uh so yeah that, that might be the same thing for some tournament games that i do have planned like i i'm just out of it um but yeah i'm still gonna be in this though like don't don't get it twisted i'll still i'll still be like playing in this league or in my own league duh so um uh, so yeah again two more weeks left to wrap two more weeks left to uh, wrap it up so uh actually i think it's yeah it's two more weeks yeah it's two more weeks now so um two more to wrap it up and that will be that. So again, thank you guys. And uh, again, great games, very good games, very top quality games. So, um, so yeah, I will see you guys then uh, for week six. So take care, be safe, wash your hands, and I will see you for the week six games. I'm gonna update the um, the matches uh, tomorrow, probably tomorrow or tonight, probably tonight, uh, depending on how I feel. Um, but yeah. Again, be safe, wash your hands, and I will see you in week six. Peace out.